How's it going, everybody? Welcome to episode number five of the Halo Outreach Podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Kulix, with a co awesome co hosty friend of awesomeness, Pat Man. Why don't you say hello? What is up, everybody? Episode five. We've made it. We yeah. made it to five. <laughs> we're not just, uh, <laughs> you know, we're, we're not just like hitting and quitting it. We're sticking with it, you know? <laughs> oh, man. We're married <laughs> to the game now. But yeah, so today on the podcast, guys, we're going to be talking about Flight 2 stuff when it comes to mcc reach awesomeness there uh, a little bit of a uh, map update for btb on mcc uh the tear down of the old bungee slash 343 building which i actually went to then i paid my respects to uh we also have the some information on the face it event the pro the pro tournament that's happening over in london this weekend and uh, a little bit of halo infinite news coming from frankie which pat i believe we'll go over on that one and to close out the show, we'll talk about the playlist rotating and out for Halo 5. So, without further ado, let's just jump right into the information here, Pat. Do you want to lead it off with the, the, some of the Flight 2 stuff that's been uh, going around recently? Sure, why not? So, Flight 2, we got an update from, I believe it was it was Postums, right? Are, are we going to call it Postums Palooza? Uh, uh, no, Postum? It wasn't a Palooza, I'd say. It was a Postum. Yeah, it was blog post i guess yeah. with the public team <laughs> um they really gave us some deep insight into what goes on with flight two uh, as part of this whole transparency thing that 343 has been all about lately obviously um you know people keep complaining about you know the this delays and the disappointment of flight two not coming but i for one actually really enjoy this transparency and they gave us some insight into these different what they call rings, no pun intended, but uh, maybe that is a pun intended, who knows. But there's these rings that they have internally at the studio, and I believe there's three, and the third one being, well, there's four technically, because there's the ring zero, one, two, and three. Ring three is the Halo Insider program, and they gave us some insight as to what Flight 2 is at right now, which I think they said it was going into ring number 2, right? Yeah, they had some blocking bugs like making it stopping from going to ring 2, which is an extended group of, of like partners that they do work with when it comes to testing out games. Because ring 0 is like all in-house, in-studio right. stuff. And ring 1 are like a close group of play testers that they handed out to. I'm sure it's probably like probably the same probably on, on uh, campus when it comes to Microsoft, probably like in-studio kind of, basically in-studio right. kind of thing. And then Ring 2, it goes out to like an extended group of play testers, and then 3 is the Halo Insider program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, I think I think it was, if my, I remember my numbers correctly, I think it was 5 blocking bugs uh, for Ring 2, and then 15 for Ring 3 before, before it's ready to head out to... Um, to, to flight number two status uh i guess you know that's good news but there's also they also mentioned that if there's a blocking bug that's big enough or something substantial it could push it all the way back to ring zero so hopefully that doesn't happen oh, but <laughs> i thought it was really yeah yeah we really just want to get I just into want, flight two just give me the halo man <laughs> i know i don't even want to i don't want to make another video on flight two until it's like I'm in. I got the email. Yay! I know, right? Okay, I feel like I've been making the same video for the last two weeks. <laughs> yeah, really, it's same same videos, same titles. I'm like, gosh, flight uh, two update. Yeah. MC PC. But yeah, I have like, actually have the list here of the bugs that they were talking about. There, the five currently blocking bugs are a security solution that doesn't auto install once the game is installed. So we definitely want your game to be secure while playing, obviously. Uh, right. like del delays in menus not working properly uh, was another one saying like when you're switching go opening game settings in the menu and then it doesn't save it or it's stuck on the screen kind of thing uh, frame mm -hmm. loss just general frame loss when playing at higher resolutions and uh, just in crashes well you know in matchmaking games for firefight so, yeah doesn't sound like a good time yeah, so definitely I'm glad they're <laughs> taking their time with yeah. that doesn't exactly sound like something ready to ship right <laughs> right exactly I've been seeing a lot of comments on my videos too. Just people just be like, "God, just do it already," you know. <laughs> I know, yeah, yeah. Same here. Uh, there's, I mean, you got you got both sides of the, like you know, they're level headed and like, hey, we don't need another MCC on Xbox debacle. We don't need that to happen again. Uh, mm. I want them 
to take their time, make sure it's right. And then you got other people are like, they promised us all MCC by the end of the year. Now we're might not even get reached by the end of the year. By the time MCC is out, Halo Infinite will be out. I'm like, you know, <laughs> whatever, guys. You know, I, I rather wait and it ship pristine and to bring Halo back in a big way because it's really like the opposite end of the spectrum. MCC originally almost killed the franchise. Like it was in a terrible state. Uh, one of the worst video game launches in the history of gaming. Yeah, the multiplayer uh, just so, legitimately just didn't work. <laughs> yeah. And it tarnished the reputation that Halo was on, like, especially after Halo 4 multiplayer. And then, you know, we had this. And then Halo 5 had its a couple issues, you know, not crazy issues, but a couple issues on launch. And then, of course, the story. Like, it was just, it was not in a good spot. I, mm -hmm. I like Halo where it is right now. And I don't want that to be ruined. So take your time, 343, ship it when it's ready. Like they keep saying, and they beat that dead horse about 10 times in this article. They said, it'll come out when it's ready. We don't have a date <laughs> or anything yet. So I guess, you know, me and Kevin, of course, will keep you guys updated as soon as we find out anything about Flight 2. But as of right now, no date. It is coming out when it's ready. I would assume it'd be released from... I was thinking September, which is when Reach would come out, but now I'm thinking probably going to be in October. October yeah. It seems yeah. like they've been doing yeah, like, well, they, they've been getting this, it's been what, a month since the last flight, right? Right, exactly. And, and yeah. then we have one more flight after this one. And yeah, I, I mean, I would almost bet money. I mean, flight two is coming out in the next week or two, I would assume. Yeah, it sounds um, like they're about like getting close to about halfway to getting to. The, uh, the insiders on that one so right i would think within the so, next two weeks well, yeah we probably would get like a flight for firefight mm -hmm. and and i don't even want to think about the matchmaking flight and how many problems that's gonna you know spring up but there's already people working on that flight you know like they they mentioned that too in the article people were like no well since the flight's delayed that means this whole game keeps get, getting pushed back and it's not necessarily true they have people working on other parts of the game as we speak it's just that flighting stuff is core like a a key thing to making the game better but it doesn't mean that they're waiting on this development to you know get this flight information back from you know from these flights they're they're still working on other things it's not delaying mcc any more than it than it needs to i, I don't know if i'm explaining that you know correctly but do you get what i'm saying they're not yeah it's not one thing at a time they're yeah exactly it all it's not holding up time. anything yeah exactly yeah. so um we should start to see this like snowball effect and hopefully you know we'll we'll get i i think october like you said i think it's going to be a fall release like i like i dubbed the fall of reach it is coming <laughs> <laughs> <What the hell>? <laughs> <laughs> that's so that's the yeah. pun laugh what are you talking about <laughs> oh man but yeah and uh they also did we actually did see a postum's tweet talking about there's gonna be three maps that are gonna be involved with the fire fight fire flight if you want to call it that <laughs> mm -hmm. um uh, it's gonna I be can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's gonna be uh the map corvette Holdout and Beachhead are going to be the three maps that are going to be featured in the uh, Fireflight mode for us to test All out. All I remember is Corvette. Which 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 one's Holdout? Is that the one oh, that's geez. like really gray? Uh, I remember Corvette, obviously, because it's in the ship. Um, Beachhead, I can't remember Beachhead at all. I don't remember Beachhead either. Okay, a Holdout um, is kind of, looks like it's, it's based off of that one that big BTB invasion map that has like the... Uh, big ship in the middle kind of thing it's like a, oh, or okay. it's called, i think it's called like boneyard like or something like yard. that uh, yeah boneyard yep yeah and then uh like that next one's beachhead which i believe is is that the one where that glitch of the elite was on uh it's like that um Stone it's it's, looking... it's taken from one of the campaign levels uh yeah yeah right before you get the uh target sensor right no that's not that one it's the one oh, okay. where you remember that's that that scene where normal six like pulls out like a flare right and you stand there like overlooking the city and stuff like that. it's like it's mm -hmm. in it's the in a major city playing. yeah it's oh, like okay. Okay. that level where you like you take on a wraith and uh, i think there's like a brute chieftain on the top of it or something like that um, okay if you look at the pictures you'd be like oh that's right i remember that one. But oh it's, i remember it's got yeah. like glass like 
it almost it's, looks like bus stops all over the the dang map. Yeah, but it's you know, like it's just taken straight from the campaign. But then yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So those are the maps right cool. there. Um. Also, that I put the birds and bugs that they showed on the on the recent uh, insider thing was actually kind of fun to watch as well. <laughs> so that, yeah, yeah, that was that was funny. Yeah, I put together. Like, yeah, I put together a little video on that as well, which actually did pretty well. People seem to really like it. People really liked the uh, the one glitch where like there was uh, there was showing one part where like his character was you know running up and then shooting at these these grunts and jackals. But sometimes the jackals would just, or grunts would just disappear rather than doing like the death animation, <laughs> just, boop, just boop, gone. And people were like, they should totally make that into a skull. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, yeah, it's going to be definitely one of those things where it's like, yeah, it's not a bug. It's a feature. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I don't know if you do you, I don't know if you play a lot of Nazi zombies and stuff for Call of Duty, but the, um, there was one like perk or, or like a gobble gum. I think it was in Black Ops 3, where if you ate it. It, and you killed a zombie, they would literally like zoop like straight up into the air or something. It was like, and like when you got a headshot, they were stri- flying straight up into the air, like they were just getting <laughs> like trebuchet across. It was it was insane. It was That's pretty awesome. funny though. That was awesome. I told you that. Uh, last, yeah. I only did like World at War zombies and Black Ops One. Those are the two zombies okay. I played. I played. Well, those, I tried playing Black Ops Two zombies, and that was just not yeah. not good for me. Yeah. Black Ops yeah. One to me is still the best. Yeah, I still go back and play Black Ops One Zombies to this mm-hmm. day with my wife. It's so good. classic. So good. But uh, I think that's everything I had to mention on Flight Two. Do you have anything you want to mention on Flight yeah. Two, there, Pat? No, uh, we'll keep you guys updated, and uh, you know, fingers crossed that we yeah. hear some news maybe this week about when it's when it's coming. So and it seems like uh, I also did see a thing about Postum saying that uh, he had, took a little bit of a survey saying like if you prefer doing more like shorter, like by like weekly updates when it comes to mcc stuff or like yeah big yeah, info like dump, or big or big info dumps like once a month and it seemed like yeah. most people wanted to do like the shorter weekly updates which i think is good just because yeah, it helps yeah. it would help me a lot of retain all this information because a lot of times even in going back to these like halo waypoint like mega dumps i'm like oh yeah that's right they talked about ce and all that stuff they're working, they're working on that now too but yeah, yeah. Uh, and as a content creator, I just think I, I rather have it like drip fed to me so I can keep up with it instead of just, you know, getting this huge blog post that I have to mm. take notes on and, and create like a 10 to 12 minute video of, you know, a bunch of information at once. I think it'd be better, especially like you said, to retain information and for the audience to retain this kind of information. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I, I prefer the weekly updates, the small little chunks. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, so we got that kind of looking forward to it there. Um, next on the list here, we're talking about the MCC BTB update that recently happened. I actually totally forgot about this until I, looking through like my uh, things I wanted to talk about. I'm like, oh yeah, that's right, that happened. Uh, we actually got some new settings and some new maps actually added into BTB for uh, MCC. Like so, Combat Evolved. Uh, they actually removed some of the PC weapons from Hang 'Em High, and uh, from there, so. You got that to look forward to. I think there was a flamethrower, if I remember correctly, on that map for PC from the PC version or something like that. I can't Hang remember. Hang them high. I've yeah. Been... No idea. I don't. I don't <laughs> think so. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. There was something I, like, I, I think there's something like that. Yeah. And then uh, Halo Two Anniversary actually got a new map, Unearthed, added in there as well for Slayer and Multi Flag, um, with also uh, you know Flag Bomb and Slayer played on Unearthed. So we got a new map in H Two A for BTB. That's huge because I think there's only like two maps or something like that. If I remember mm, correctly, like yeah. two or three maps from the rotation for H2A. So that's definitely going to help out because I love playing H2A. It's a ton of fun. And then, yeah. uh, yeah, it's definitely one of my favorites. I guess I have to talk about this, but Halo 4 as well. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. uh, so they added in respawning non random ordinance drops to Ragnarok, Daybreak, and Vertigo. But, I really like Halo 4's BTB, uh, honestly. Like, I thought it took a major step back in Halo 5, uh, whereas, like like, I said, like I've said several times, Halo 4 and Halo 5 are like polar opposites of each other. Halo 4 had terrible arena gameplay, great story, bad gameplay in the campaign, and I think good BTB, and then Halo 5 has bad BTB, great arena, uh, terrible <laughs> story, and really good parts of the campaign gameplay wise so they're just opposites of each other basically mm-hmm. but yeah I, I actually like like exile is one of my favorite btb maps i, I really like it 
Yeah, that's well, actually not too bad. But I don't know, it's just for me, just nothing about Halo Four's multiplayer really uh yeah. works with me yep. that well. But Yeah, we know we know your know. stance on Halo Four there, <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> but yeah. And so um got that whole thing taken care of. So yeah, jump in, play some new content in BTB on MCC. It's gonna be a good time. Yeah. Uh, uh yeah, so next on the list here, we're actually talking about the old Bungie slash three four three building was recently destroyed, down demolished down to the foundation the sad Damn. sad moment yeah the game halo 3 through halo 5 were made in that building and then i'm um, sorry i had the burp there and um mm-hmm. the 343 yeah, but they moved over they moved into a new office i believe like two or three years ago now at this point and mm. and so they left the old the old building that was used to be what's in kirkland washington now they work in redmond washington which is kind of closer to the uh microsoft campus so that's probably why and stuff like that and yeah, so, so uh Big daddy can keep an eye on them and i actually live in kirkland washington and so then i actually had a chance to i you know i had to go by and pay my respects you know of course <laughs> i had to see it for myself and i was like the funny thing is like i totally just d- wasn't even thinking about like where in kirkland the 343 building used to be or you know because i've been living in this area for like while like what you're like two and a half years now mm. and i just never thought like oh i wonder where uh you know i always figured that their the studio was like you know some distant area in kirkland like in the woods or something like that but no it's actually like right in downtown kirkland it's like secluded like I, area 51 yeah that, yeah i thought that's why i thought but no it's like right in the middle of downtown <laughs> yeah and uh so yeah, i went by i paid my respects put up a thing on twitter just <laughs> doing a little crying face like oh no <laughs> But uh, F, F, uh, F in the chat for big the old Bungie. Yes, yeah. please. So yeah, like I said, three for Halo 3 through Halo 5 were made in that building. So it's a bit of a, for a cultural landmark for gaming, at least in the Pacific yeah. Northwest here. Yeah, and, it was uh, Halo in its prime right there. And actually, I put a link in there. I'll put a link in the video here where um, po- uh, Sketch actually posted up like an old tour video that they did a long time ago. And so mm-hmm. uh, you guys get it's kind of a fun thing to check out. It's like uh, Sketch is doing the recording while Frankie's kind of walking around showing off the building and stuff like that. So you want to see what the building used to look like, you know, it was all its glor- former glory. That's the way to check it out there. Some people were like, yeah, cool. some people were like, I should have been a national monument. They should have never done that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I was one of those people. <laughs> but like, actually, I got a chance to, I was in the, hopped into like the social stream that 343 does, you know, every week or yeah, every week uh-huh. and Sketch was on. And they were talking about the old building being taken down. I actually got asked a question in the chat asking if uh, which building did he like more? The the old building in Kirkland or the new one that they have in Redmond here? And uh, he was like, mm, it's a tough one. He said that he liked the Kirkland one more because it had a bit more character to it. Where like uh, the new the one they have in Redmond is much more just like a standard just office. It's not really anything cool about it. Right. Where, yeah, but, they, that, but this new one's like state of the art. Yeah, and then that, and like it's, uh, it's, it fits the team better. They said like they just kind of outgrew the building. That's why they moved. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, three for three is freaking humongous now. Yeah, they they could never make it work in that building. Oh yeah, yeah. And, but uh, so yeah, sadly, sad moments. But you know, all good things must come to an end. I guess. <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, got, and then uh, I guess next on let's see we're talking about the Face It Ignite uh, HCS event happening this weekend over in London, which I think this is going to be the first hcs london event in i want to say almost two years i know they had one recent uh, yeah it was it's been like two years since the last one i remember like the last one they had was before the the uh hcs finals in 2018 it was like a qualifier kind of thing when you know, when they were going like around you know north america and also in london as well so it's been a while for those since the for those Brits to get a chance to sweat it up in some Halo as well. But yeah, so there's gonna be mm-hmm. some uh Halo 3. 44 is kind of the main thing there. Uh first place is gonna be walking around with ten thousand dollars, second place with six thousand, third place with four thousand, fourth place with twenty five hundred, and then fifth and sixth get one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars there. So nice little nice. nice little chunk of change there. Mm-hmm. I think it was like. But a, did you convert that into pounds? Oh sh- no, no! Oh my gosh! No, <laughs> that's a, that's at least that's what the uh, the Gamepedia page said at least mm-hmm. for this. So that's what I'm taking off, and they haven't written in dollars. And then uh, there's actually going to be a Halo Five two v two 
going on there as well, which is pretty cool. So I'm glad to still see some competitive Halo 5 happening. Uh, it's a shame, just like the last year of Halo 5's like main run for competitive play, they like, finally nailed down the settings, and then they're like, all right, we're done with Halo 5. Like, man, but it was so good. It was right. so good. I still love playing Team Arena in Halo 5. It's probably one of my favorite competitive modes of Halo in any in the Halo game. It's probably Halo 5's Team Arena settings now. Yes, yeah, and yeah, uh, that's good. And I also saw that um, uh, Tashi that is currently working on putting together like an HCS uh, hard 2v2 hardcore settings to be placed for, I think actually for matchmaking as well. So if you oh want to get a chance to sweat it up there, then yeah, you just extra opportunity. extra perspiration. <laughs> that actually would be cool because I should actually probably have a good, decent amount of uh, forge maps as well, I would assume, because there's not really a whole lot of maps in Halo 5 that do well for 2v2s. Besides maybe like, um, uh, why am I blinking on the green map that's like in the city? It's one of the good, one of the few good maps in the game. God. Plaza, Plaza, yes, Plaza, yeah. And uh, yeah. probably Coliseum, I would think, would also work out pretty well. But everything yeah, else, Coliseum like, would be good. Yeah. And uh, over, obviously, Overgrown, fantastic map. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, but yeah. So that uh, oh, yeah. and also, if I, I asked um, Batchford, who's looking to be part of the Halo Five Two V Two. That's gonna be happening there. If you guys don't know Batchford, he's a, a Halo streamer over there on Twitch. And he's kinda of involved with like the uh competitive scene in Halo. You know, he's competed on stage and stuff like that a bunch of times. And uh he was basically saying that um I was asking him like, hey, is there any kind of teams or anybody you should look out for? And I uh, mainly like you mentioned a few names, I'm like, Oh yeah, I've heard about that guy too. And so it's kinda of like a lot of sim similar names you've heard if you're familiar at all with the the EU scene when it comes to like, competitive Halo. Uh, but it sounds like Jimbo's team is kind of going to be the one to really watch out for. I can't remember the name of his team, uh, but it, I remember the batch were telling me the people that were on that team. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's going to be, a, that's gonna be a, a, a tough team to beat there for sure. But yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. And so they look forward to that. Yeah, it's going to be uh, none, none of the teams have been official yet because I think they're probably still qualifying when it comes to placements and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's going to be 32 teams for the Halo 3 4v4, and then there's going to be 64 teams for the Halo 5 2v2. Cool. And so we got that going on there. So I'm looking forward to it. I love competitive Halo. It's going to be on... Yeah, I'm uh, going to try to catch it. It's going to be on the, the Catch the Streams. They're going to be on the Face It uh, channels. So it's not going to be on the Halo channel. So like Mixer.com slash Face It. Uh, Caffeine.tv, that's another one. Slash Face It. That's one of their links. As well as uh, Twitch TV slash Face It TV on that one. And so those are ways to check it out. So yeah, it's not going to be, like I said, not on the Halo channels, but it's on the Face It specific channels. So you definitely want to remember that, guys. Uh, but yeah, I'm sure I'll be, I'm sure I'll be, uh, I know I'll be tweeting it out just because like, you know. I, yeah, you're Mr. Uh, Mr. Sweat. <laughs> for sure, for With sure. With your headband, your ninja headband. Huh? <laughs> as long as it's a mixer but headband. <laughs> Ooh, shots fired! Uh, actually, but, um, actually, recently I saw that he was streaming on Mixer. He's playing some PUBG, and he had like thirteen thousand people watching him play PUBG on Mixer. Well, did you? So yeah, we, but, now, now we have a little uh, Halo Infinite news coming from Frankie. Yeah, a little, uh, little Infinite news, Infinite news. Oh. So, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Frankie, Frank O'Connor, Mister Frankles, said. Uh, in a recent interview that basically, and I've reiterated or two on my videos, but a lot of people are worried that the Xbox one, cause we know Halo infinite's coming out in the Xbox one family of consoles. So that basically means the Xbox one, the Xbox, the Xbox one X. And of course the project Scarlet is part of that family as well. So people are worried that maybe the Xbox One uh, original model version would really be dumbed down, maybe missing features and things like that. And Frankie was asked about that. And he said, while playing on the standard Xbox One and presumably also the Xbox One X, you will still have a good experience. The Xbox One is not going to be a second class citizen. They're building it so it plays and looks fantastic on Xbox One. Halo Infinite is also launching for PC, as many of you know. So if you have a really beefy PC, it's probably going to be the best version of Halo Infinite that you could possibly play as long as you have that expensive rig. 
But also, he said that obviously the special citizen for Halo Infinite will be the Project Scarlet, and they've worked with that hardware team to make sure the game shows up amazingly on it and worked with them to make sure that they know how to make sure the game looks amazing, but it will be for the Xbox One and still look incredible on there as well. It will also be on PC for the first time on launch day, so that's exciting for them as well. And they, he also stated that they changed the way they develop and the way they think about things, but they're always shooting for the best possible hardware target. This time, it's going to be up to you to decide. It's going to be a Scarlet, a PC. It kind of depends on your PC at that point, he says. But the Xbox One is not going to be second-class citizen. And he just basically reiterates again, it will look fantastic on the Xbox One. And they have a few tricks up their sleeves that they're thinking about. Don't know what that means, but we'll see. And Microtransactions. I really... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Rick packs, Rick packs. Um, you know it's going to be interesting to see honestly obviously I don't think they're going to cut any major features and put it behind mm. you know the scarlet but it's going to be a night and day difference man like you know it, but it's, it's just like being on PC you have a PC and you have a freaking you know if you're running a 1050 Ti versus a freaking 1080 Ti you're going to see a huge difference so, you know, it's, we'll see, but yeah, I, th I think they're just going to have to dumb that down, lower your graphic settings, lower your draw distances, your textures, maybe your AI on screen, things like that, whatever they have to do to get it to run well on the Xbox one. And then on top of that, like I mentioned earlier, when we were talking, it's going to have split screen too. So that's also really demanding on a system and the Xbox one original model is very underwhelming as far as power goes so it's going to be interesting to see but if anybody would know how to do it it's first party and 343 is obviously first party so i'm sure they do have some tricks up their sleeve to make it run nice and for all the people who are still going to be rocking the old systems when the scarlet comes out so that's yeah, very interesting i would say it probably would be I mean, it might be one of those things where it goes down to like 30 fps at like 900p or something like that Probably on the original consoles. Well, not mm -hmm. original consoles, but I mean, like on the original Xbox One, which we can set. We mean we've seen from just what listening to like three for, what three for three has been saying about like the MCC development that they're running into technical hardware issues when it comes to the original Xbox, just because like there's just not enough power in it to run a lot of the stuff that they want to do. Like right mm -hmm. like with that running Unreal Four engine, they do a lot of rendering. For the uh, character models for Halo Reach, along with the new progression system, they're running out of memory. You know, like we need to figure out a way to like, rework a lot of this stuff so we can get it to work. Right. And yeah. so, um, I mean, like the, that's a that's I mean, that's right. a different beast too. That you know, like MCC is just what 10, 11 engines all at once. Like yeah. that's just freaking ridiculous. Because mm -hmm. I remember, and uh, right after that Discover Hope trailer came out, Chris Lee came out with that blog post. Uh, you know, with a little bit more details. And he, he said in that blog post, he's like, you know, the Xbox One still has untapped potential that we're excited to take, you know, and he could be just saying that, but I believe him when he says that. I mean, look at Halo 4. Halo 4 did not look like a 360 game. I True. still, to this day, can't believe that was a 360 game. It could have, you could have told me that's an Xbox One launch title and I would have believed you like instantly, not, not a doubt. So that was the original I mean, they're, idea. They're good. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I think they do have, I, I'm saying more probably towards the X. The X is a beast of a, of, of a console as far as, you know, what we have right now uh, compared to, you know, the competition. So I, I, I still think they could definitely tap into some of the power for that system. I don't know so much about the original Xbox One or the Xbox One S, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, I mean... What, what do you think? Are you going to go to Scarlet when it comes out? Or are you going to go to PC? Or are you going to hold off and just play I, it on your um, original Xbox? No, definitely not doing that. <laughs> but um, yeah, I built this PC for Halo. So I'm, I'm going to play it on there. Um, but I'm probably going to get a Scarlet as well. Just because I always like having the the ease of access of a console mm -hmm. and I, you know, I have my PC and my Xbox one X right next to each other. So, you know, I, I have a 4k monitor, so I just freaking have the Xbox one on that 4k monitor and I'm good to go. So uh 4k 60 should be the standard 
for next gen for every game. So I could still squeeze some, some lifetime out of this monitor. So I, I probably will get it. It's just a matter of the, here's, will be the deciding factor for me, Kevin. Every time a halo comes out, I drop loads of money on it. I, I buy everything. I buy the collector's edition. I buy the, whatever limited edition system that comes out, whatever controllers come out. So if they come out with a scarlet version of the Halo Infinite console, I am, I'm, I'm buying it hands down. But if not, and it's just saying, you know, like a regular skew, I could probably hold off a little bit, but I would eventually will get one. Yeah. That was, that was one thing I was kind of thinking like, yeah, it would be cool to get like the, the Halo version of the console, which you know, there was going to be one for sure, especially for, you know, launch right. title. It's just a matter <laughs> if it's going to be the Scarlet or if it's going to be an Xbox one X mm-hmm. because the only time I've ever, the only console I can think of that got a limited edition like right off the bat at launch was the was the uh, Xbox One X. It had the Project Scorpio edition or whatever. They usually don't do those uh, those new SKUs until later in the in the cycle. But you know, obviously for Halo's Halo special, so you know Halo could totally be different. Speaking of that, have you seen the new Gears one that that's coming out? I did see that console. It looked pretty it looks cool. Pretty, yeah, it looks pretty sick. But uh, but then again, I don't really play Gears. I love the story. I, I thought the campaigns yeah. one for one through three were amazing, but I haven't really played them since. Like I, I played like about a third of the way through Gears Four, and I just mm-hmm. kind of stopped. It gets better as it goes on. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. really slow to start. It's that that first third of the game could just totally be discarded if you ask me. Really? <laughs> yeah, but like the last half is amazing. Uh, maybe maybe we'll do a playthrough of that. I want to play through that again before five comes out. So That'd maybe we could do yeah. a playthrough of that. Yeah, yeah, and also I would also think with like uh the, with Halo Infinite, there's there's got to be crossplay. Like with the way the game is working going right now, like crossplay yeah. between like PC and Xbox. I mean. And yeah, yeah, because like now, not, not even Call of Duty has got a way, has found a way to make it so PS4 and Xbox players and PC can all play together. Mm-hmm. This is crazy. So, and then, now they're they're doing it too, where like it kind of like Fortnite, where it detects what input you're mm-hmm. using. So, if you're using mouse and keyboard against other, mouse, but you could still use a mouse and keyboard on your Xbox if you want, you could just plug it right in and face PC players using mouse and keyboard, or you could use your controller on PC but play against Xbox users or PS4 users mm-hmm. using a controller. So. If they go that route, I think that's cool. But mouse and keyboard versus controller players, I don't yeah, know. I don't know about that. I struggle but enough it does, with you know facing other console players. I will say though, it does. It does what Frankie says in this article too about saying that special citizen being the Scarlet it lets you know that they're still making Halo with like a Xbox point of view. Like this is an Xbox game kind of thing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, They're, I mean, this is the showcase title yeah. for their new for X, you know, Microsoft's new system. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's already been confirmed that this new system has ray tracing in it. So, imagine, I mean, I could almost bet that Halo Infinite's going to have ray tracing and and things like that are going to freaking make it look amazing. Mm-hmm. I mean, the new Call of Duty is going to have ray tracing on PC, so I, I would expect Halo Infinite to launch with with like some really special under the hood stuff to really showcase the power of that system. With that whole new engine as well to be able to do that kind of stuff. Exactly. But yeah, and that, I think also kind of I feel like it also kind of plays a little bit into like uh, you know what a lot of people have been talking about the competitive scene also when it comes to Halo Infinite. Well, like, is it going to be like PC focus? Or is it going to be on Xbox or is it going to be like both? I think they should just open it up to like, anybody, you know. And just yeah. let people play, and whatever input device you prefer to you play on, go for it. I mean, yeah. that's that's, yeah, what, that's uh, what Call of Duty just did. Yeah, Call of Duty. Yeah, and, and then um, but also, well, like the recent Fortnite Fortnite yeah. uh, tournament that had like the top one hundred yeah, players on it. There were guys playing controller against PC people on there. Yeah, I um, think the controller pl- oh, controller team finished like second or something. Didn't yeah, they? they finished second in the yeah. in the duos, which is yeah. pretty crazy to think about. We're playing against PC guys. And, um, yeah, or like uh, and all that. That's or like s- snipe downs but i think literally had the most kills in the recent apex tournament playing on controller where everyone else was on pc yeah he's yeah he's a god because that's well that's just snipe down though yeah <laughs> right exactly but they actually finished second place in the apex tournament for uh, x games which was uh, that's pretty cool, awesome yeah. and yeah he had the most kills in the tournament on controller which is just crazy to think about but i think like 
Halo should. I feel like Halo should just go about that same route too. It's just be like, if you want to play it on PC or you want to use a controller, whatever you know, as long as you're playing, mm -hmm. they probably will probably just have to do it on Xbox. So just because of whole Microsoft Xbox marketing kind of thing, you know. Yeah, it could, but you know, Microsoft's been really pushing PC too lately. Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, that's what I would like. Pass, I would like to see. Stuff. Yeah, I, I would just like to see it coming down to preference rather than platform. When it comes yeah, to the and, I, and thing, Microsoft's same. definitely more consumer friendly now than they ever at like the beginning of this this console generation. So, mm. I mean, Phil Spencer's all about giving choice. Uh, that's really been his motto. Like, you know, I want cross. Like he was fighting Sony. You know calling them out when crossplay, you know, Sony was being stubborn about that. Um, you know, taking your games with you to the next system, backwards compatibility, your controllers and all that will work on the next Xbox. Uh, like all that kind of stuff is all consumer friendly. So I, I definitely think that's a possibility. Oh, that really does remind me when the, when the new elite comes out, I got a buddy who oh, works yeah. at Microsoft and he's going to be able to give me like half off on it. So I'm like, yeah. Oh, can you uh, can you get maybe two <laughs> for half off? Because I, I would love that. I'm, I'm definitely probably going to get it. Definitely, probably. Yeah. It would be nice to use pedals in Halo 5 so I can boost without taking my thumbs off the sticks. Yeah, that's exactly what I do now. I have an Elite now and I love it, but I'm really looking forward to the upgrades of the uh, Elite V2, mm -hmm. which, by the way, they need to come out with a Halo 1 because they came out with the Gears Elite and I've been waiting for a Halo 1 ever since and they haven't come out with it. Oh man, then yeah, they definitely need to come out with a Halo one. That would be one hundred percent my go to on that one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so, was there anything else you wanted to touch on on this article here, Pat? No, that was about it. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, there was another article that came out this week that I could just really summarize in one sentence. Uh, Matt Booty, who I believe is the head of Xbox Game Studios, he just basically talked about Halo Infinite real quick, saying that it's gonna be the biggest the best most expansive game they've ever done you know the same old marketing yeah. stuff that they always say they said the same thing with halo 5 which you know halo 5 had big environments big set pieces but it just lacked substance so mm. you know i, I um epic you know, stories. same old stuff with, epic yeah, worlds epic exactly. adventures i just hear bonnie <laughs> saying that in my head uh but we all knew that and we knew you know he also reiterated that it's a new direction for the series so it really makes me the, the way he worded everything really makes me think a light open world game still uh, that I'm going to stand behind that and I look forward to it but I'm looking at Halo Infinite being the god of war for Xbox you know like oh, yeah. the, the reboot of a beloved franchise that just you know propels it you know mm -hmm. into the front of the gaming scene and I, I, I really hope Infinite does that for Halo Oh yeah, I mean, have like going back to the previous podcast talking about that Cortana audio, and I was like, well, you have the Cortana voices that kind of overlap each other towards the end of that. If you play the hidden audio with the actual audio, now I'm mm -hmm. like bringing up the idea, like, well, if you have to find multiple Cortanas and put them on the same chip, kind of thing, you know, mm -hmm. kind of crazy, which would lend itself to a pretty good gameplay loop for like an open world kind of aspect of it, exactly. especially yeah, also. Good fetch quest. And also just from like that initial trailer that we saw of the announcement trailer, they showed this big open landscape with a warhog driving through with all these towers placed around, which just like to me screams open world. Like, yeah, those towers alone is just and the focus of those mm. have like that have been on there on each trailer. Uh, yeah, it screams open world. Yeah, and like that. basically to, to like pull like just a one quote, he says, Build a bigger universe, a bigger set of gameplay scenarios with more to explore. And when I hear explore, and like Frankie said this before, a real focus on exploration and stuff like that, mm. it, it makes me think open world. Maybe not full blown Skyrim open world, but maybe light like Destiny open world or Halo 1 when you step on the Halo ring and it's just like go, you know, but, mm -hmm. but more of a sense of that, like not a mission that you're just on that Halo ring once, but you're exploring this freaking halo ring like you're exploring this whole thing yeah. and i hope there's like upgrades and stuff to your armor and i think about coming out with a video on it because chief's armor is different in those two trailers so yeah, maybe so you could upgrade your changes, armor change it yeah. out that would yeah. be cool i, I would love to see that like if you could just like change out armor pieces and like this one you know gives you five yeah. percent speed boost but then like you speed lose a little boost. bit in like armor or, you know, exactly, or like your uh, beefy chief can tank more freaking damage, and but he's slower, you know, like 
Josh yeah, Brother Chief in the Discover Ho trailer, he went extra exactly. beefy. <laughs> exactly. He's extra tanky. Yeah. But yeah, and and they kind of started it with Halo 5 too, with with uh the hidden the hidden weapons in the campaign, and then in Warzone, the different variants of weapons. Think about that in the in the campaign. Okay, well, you can upgrade your weapons maybe with certain attachments and certain uh, you know, that would give you certain abilities to, you know, if okay, well, if you want to tackle this mission stealth based or this this outpost or something that you have to go conquer okay well i want to go in stealthy all right now i gotta go find a suppressor attachment and things like that to really stock out my kit to play the way i want like i i just think of freedom and player choice and like a big sandbox and Mm -hmm. and that's what halo is so and it just seems like a natural evolution for the series so i'm really excited for it yeah i think just kind of like a, a light open world with a curated story like right exactly set up events yeah. that you need to go through but yeah people gave awesome. me like crap on one of my videos too they're like why would you want attachments why i said and i specifically said that in, that in multiplayer i'm just talking campaign no you can't do that all oh, that i'm like why why not you know like i don't i don't get it if eh. if you're gonna have an open world game i think you need to have some light rpg elements in there or else it's gonna feel too big and too barren and too bleh, you know, like mm. you need to have stuff that you want to work towards and to change it up and change gameplay up. So yeah, yeah we'll see. Mm. So yeah, I guess that's everything for the uh, Halo Infinite news a little bit there. Just talking yep. about the uh, different platforms and what to expect there. I'm expecting them to make a full jump to PC when it comes to Halo Infinite. I don't think I'm going to get the new consoles because like it's just going to be more beneficial to me to upgrade my PC and get the game on there rather than exactly getting on the xbox where i still have a kind of a mediocre to bad pc right now right yeah it's mediocre it's not that bad but it's no not that it's, great. it's not bad it's it's, yeah. it's definitely a middle of the line machine and i the, mean you got a freaking 1080 ti right yeah so that's not yeah, too that's bad still an expensive Which card I, yeah. I actually bought that for my 343 employee <laughs> nice yeah it was actually kind of funny it was like and then um uh, it's because i just like he said he was selling it on facebook and so i was like he was selling it for you know a decent price and then i saw uh, like you know, when you're selling things on facebook you can see, you can go to their profile and see who they are to kind of check out they're not like some sketchy dude who's gonna rape you <laughs> you know <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but uh and it said he worked at three for three i'm like really yeah it's like it was like ben moreau i believe it's like moreau he does a lot of the uh ben <laughs> on the truth yeah he, uh, he does a lot of the uh art like um artwork when it comes to halo a lot of like the oh, okay. um they call it like the like concept uh, art concept art yeah a lot of kind of stuff okay, cool. together cool. but yeah so my that was my first interaction with the 343 employee <laughs> hell yeah that's cool and i remember talking to him like how about halo infinite man he's like uh, it's a lot of work <laughs> <laughs> yeah sure uh, but yeah so i guess we're moving forward uh talking about this week's worth of information for uh halo 5 we recently like well you had that sniper playlist ranked snipes yes. which is apparently mm-hmm. you're either playing against what d- like lower tier guys or champions i think at this point like now plats and diamonds who are trash or champs i saw they, that you made they, it to, no scope you i saw that you made it to the onyx level on that i did i'm onyx in that and in slayer now nice yeah, i'm still bad i'm just a lonely diamond I think I'm actually only like plat. I think I'm plat six now, or almost diamond oh, one. Good. And, I need uh, to party up with you then. And, and, uh, for the uh, sniper playlist, of course. Towards the end, yeah, uh, we, we were streaming that, and I got there was a couple points where I just like shot you on purpose <laughs> a couple times. <laughs> yeah, you and Jim and Jimbo always freaking Halo Five player here, freaking just Spartan charging me all the time. Yeah. Just like, oh my god. <laughs> But yeah, so for Halo 5, we got that. We've been playing that. Uh, Castle Wars recently came in. And then, so, this week for Halo 5 uh, Social, I guess, or Wars in Rotation, we have Forerunner Slayer coming in on the 15th, along with Warzone Assault coming on the 15th, which I love Warzone Assault. I was always sad when they removed it. But it was always low, lower populated mode. But uh, I feel like Warzone Assault was just here like not too long ago. Like, a week or two ago it was here. Maybe I'm just... Uh... Warzone Turbo was there. Yeah, no, I feel like I feel like I'm, I feel like it hasn't been like a long time since the last time I played Assault, but that's coming in on the fifteenth. I get that to look forward to. Uh, I'll probably, I'll definitely get a chance to play some Assault, which is actually the, probably one of the best modes to play for grinding out rec points. Still, just like oh, is it? Yeah, it's actually really good. 
Um, well, well, I actually made thing. a video on it if you actually watch it, but it was, you know, no, it, I, I put that video out. Want to start that train, Kevin? Because <laughs> we could start that train. <laughs> uh, no, I mean I put that video out back when like around the launch before. of Halo Five. So this is we're pushing yeah. like four years ago. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I've watched. I watched a lot of your videos when Halo Five first came out. And then, uh, so yeah, we got that going on. So I think uh, that's about all for the podcast, then, Pat. Unless there's anything you want to bring yeah, up. I guess no uh we can move on through to the outro outros closing credits so guys thank you very closing much for listening in here uh pat thank you very much for co- jumping on as always for your another awesome episode of halo goodness when it comes to this and of course uh, man wouldn't miss it for the world unless i was having a baby or something i still probably wouldn't miss it though <laughs> <laughs> pat reported live from the freaking from the hospital, hospital. <laughs> But yeah, so Put we're a really like good condenser on so that they can't hear uh, the baby crying in the background. <laughs> so uh, that, that's dedication right there, man. But yeah, right. so uh, people, where can people find Patman Gaming content? Well, I'm glad you asked once again, Kevin, because I've been kind of rebranding everything. Like I said, match uh, all my all all one name basically hit or miss because some things are taken. But at, on YouTube, I am Patman Gaming. On Twitch, I am the Patman Gaming. On Xbox, I am now the Patman Gaming. Whoa! And updates. Yeah. Yes. Update alert. <laughs> and on Twitter, I am at the Patman Gaming. But on Mixer, I'm just Patman Gaming because I don't know. Somebody took Patman Gaming, just Patman Gaming, on on Twitch, and they don't even stream. Like I looked at their profile, they don't ever stream. And I tried message them to see if they'd give me the name, and they never messaged me back. So I, I guess I'm going to have to rebrand my <laughs> mixer uh, in 30 days to the Patman Gaming so that it all matches. But mm. yes, been trying to make sure everything is nice and clean so people can find me easier. And um, yeah, I've been been just enjoying some Halo 5 this week, the grind. I I just look back at my when I started streaming two weeks ago, Kevin, on Twitch. I was a 111. I am now at 145. Nice. Hell yeah, yeah dude. so we're, we're we're making some progress, making but moves. I've hit a wall. Yeah, I've hit a wall now, so it's going to be a slow grind. Yeah, it's, that's Twitch. It's a slow grind, but if you stay up with it, it will continue to be rewarding for you. Oh, yeah. And uh, just let everyone know, if you're watching this on YouTube, that the links to his stuff are in the description down below. Go give him a follow. I tell you, I demand it. It's free. <laughs> It's it's also um, it's sugar free as well. I don't know if you guys knew that. Ooh. Yeah, so it's actually healthy for you. It's actually a very healthy thing for you to do the while yes, you're born here. Dose of Patman is always good for anybody. <laughs> sugar free, gluten free, uh, GMO, no GMOs, vegan friendly, and uh, uh, no animal testing. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> uh. What about you, Kevin? Where can people find you, and what have you been up to? Well, yeah, you'll find me on YouTube, Kevin Coolex. We got Twitch, Kevin Coolex. Uh, we got Twitter, Kevin Coolex Halo. Uh, those are my main platforms. Oh, and also Instagram, Kevin Coolex on there as well. Uh, like I said, link to all the stuff is going to be in the description down below if you're watching on YouTube. And uh, yeah, I'd say just playing a lot of Halo 5. I've been really needing to get back into playing Red Dead Redemption 2 because I'm at chapter 5 out of 7, I think there is in that game. Mm-hmm. And so I definitely need to finish that before Red Dead, before me, before uh, Reach comes to PC. Because then I'm like, well, I guess I'm just doing that for the rest of my life or until Infinite, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah you got to get that done. But yeah, so you just type in Kevin Kulix in the word Halo, space and Halo, and you'll probably find me. But yeah, playing a lot of Halo. Then uh, I feel like I did something else. Like I played, I feel like I played some other game recently. I think it's like PUBG. We play a little yeah, we, PUBG. We, we tried, on PC. We, yeah, we tried a little PUBG. And uh, my PC can barely run that game. <laughs> We're running into some yeah, issues there, but appara- is. apparently it's a very CPU heavy game, and so that's why. Yeah, my, I was say my CPU the best of PCs have problems with that game. Yeah, and my my uh, PC is very bottlenecked by my uh, my CPU. So yeah, but <laughs> got some other expenses I got to take care of first before upgrading the PC. So yeah, so donate to Kevin Cool on his Twitch <laughs> so he could put money aside for a new. All right. Uh, well, yeah, guys. And so uh, that's about everything. Thank you so much for listening. Really do appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoyed your stay here listening to the podcast. We do it every week, post it up every Monday for you guys to keep up with that. 
And uh, keep it on, we're on Podbean, we're on Spotify, we're here on YouTube, and I, we're still trying to get the whole iTunes thing going for you guys as well. But uh, mm-hmm. like I said, links to all of those so will be, be in the description down below as well. Yeah. Soon to be live stream too, so yeah, look forward to that. Yeah, we're looking into possibly doing the live streaming on the on the podcast as well, just to kind of uh you know, get you guys interactive with it as well. Maybe do like some Q and A kind of stuff as well. But we'll see how it goes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and listening. I greatly appreciate it. Uh we'll catch you guys next Monday. Yep. Thanks guys. See you.